Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Sakamoto. Today, I want to talk about cervical disc herniation, lumbar disc herniation, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, lumbar spinal stenosis, and regeneration medicine for these. Let's see cervical disc herniation and cervical spondylotic myelopathy. First, I'll explain about cervical disc herniation. Like this picture, a tunnel-like spinal canal runs along the back of the cervical spine. Inside of the canal, the spinal cord runs through and controls sensory and motor nerves from the brain. Inner vertebral discs between the cervical vertebrae serve as a cushion. As a result of aging and sport activities, the intervertebral discs can protrude into the spinal canal in this way. The bulge disc will then compress the spinal cord inside the canal. Since the spinal cord behind the cervical vertebrae connects to the sensory and motor nerves from the arms and legs, compressed spinal cord due to the bulge disc causes numbness in hands and legs and makes it hard to hold chopsticks or to fasten buttons. Other symptoms are weakness of the legs, causing one to trip even on a small step, and cervical spondylotic myelopathy has similar symptoms to cervical disc herniation, but the causes are a little different. Here, the spinal cord and the spinal canal is not only pressured from the front like a cervical disc herniation, the structure called a ligamentum flavum behind the spinal cord thickens as one ages. This causes the spinal canal to narrow and results in pressuring the spinal cord. In addition, the vertebral body deforms and creates bone spurs like this. These bone spurs compress the nerves too. The cervical spondylotic myelopathy is a condition where the spinal cord is pressured by a cervical disc herniation, ligamentum flavum, and bone spurs from the vertebral body. The cervical disc herniation is caused by a bulge disc pressuring the spinal cord from the front side. Contrarily, cervical spondylotic myelopathy can occur when intervertebral discs, bone spurs, or ligamentum flavum narrow the spinal canal and pressures the spinal cord. The difference of lumbar disc herniation and lumbar spiral stenosis is very similar to the difference between cervical disc herniation and cervical spondylolic myelopathy. Lumbar disc herniation is caused by a bulge disc pressuring spinal cord from the front side, and lumbar spinal stenosis is caused by the spinal cord and the spinal canal behind the lumbar vertebrae being pressed by intervertebral discs, bone spurs, ligamentum flavum, and the nerve becomes damaged. The symptoms caused by compression on the spinal cord at the lower back are numbness and weakness in the legs, bladder and rectal disturbance, and more. The characteristic symptom of lumbar spinal stenosis is intermittent claudication. This means that when walking for a distance, one's legs become severely numb and force one to stop walking and rest. Cervical disc herniation, lumbar disc herniation, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, and lumbar spinal stenosis start from moderate pain and numbness that you can endure in the beginning, but worsens if you leave it, as the pain and numbness get stronger and the muscles weaken making harder to grip objects and to walk comfortably. If untreated at the first sign of pain and numbness and left for a long period of time, even if it is treated with an operation, likely leading to further complications like muscle strength not recovering well and numbness and pain not disappearing completely. Because the spinal cord is physically compressed by discs, ligaments, and bone spurs for a long time, damaged nerves 
even after relieving pressure by surgery, cannot recover and repair it to a normal level. This makes numbness, pain, and weakness remain. When I was working in a hospital, explaining about operations for cervical disc herniation and lumbar disc herniation, I would inform the patients that the pain may reduce somewhat, but that surgery may not remove the pain completely, and the numbness possibly stays. That was what I used to explain. In severe cases, where the spinal cord was compressed for over 10 years, I explained the symptom might not be reduced at all. This means surgery is not so much for recovery as to prevent the condition from worsening. However, among cases with serious complications, such as strong numbness and severe muscle weakness, regenerative medicine, such as injecting stem cells into the spinal cord, has resulted in cases of amazing recovery. Honestly, surprising me. Now, let me explain about an actual case at our clinic using regenerative medicine treatment. A male in his 60s had suffered symptoms from cervical disc herniation and cervical spondylotic myelopathy. His main complaints were numbness in the hands and intermittent claudication when walking. His hand numbness was severe and worsened by cold wind. As for intermittent claudication, 20 to 30 meters of walking resulted in the numbness too severe to continue. This patient needed surgery to relieve the severe numbness in his hands caused by a cervical disc herniation in 2002. But this surgery did not resolve symptoms and another surgery for cervical disc herniation was conducted in 2011. But this one also did not relieve the numbness in his hands. For lumbar spinal stenosis, two surgeries in 2016 and 2020 treated the intermittent claudication, but his back pain persisted. He kept receiving a once-a-week steroid injection in a clinic, and after seeing our video on YouTube, he came to us to try regenerative medicine. This image is his MRI. This image was taken after the surgeries. You can see the spinal canal is opened up, and the major herniated discs are removed. The spinal cord looks clear in this image. But even if the MRI showed the spinal cord to be normal, the numbness in his hand still stayed. The damage causing the numbness in his hands or the muscle weakness cannot always show even on an MRI. Although surgery can remove obviously protruding parts of the disc, certain types of damage to the spinal cord are not possible to detect by an MRI or other advanced technology and so are hard to treat. He then came to us for spinal cord stem cell injections. After the fourth day of the treatment, the severe numbness in his hands that had remained after two surgeries was reduced by as much as 30%. And on the sixth day, the numbness in the hands was reduced by half, and the back pain was also reduced by half. Three weeks after the injection, his back pain was reduced by 70%. In one month, the numbness in his hands was also reduced by 70% and back pain by 80%. The numbness in his hands and his back pain that could not be relieved with surgeries showed amazing improvement by the spinal cord stem cell therapy. This man took a variety of pharmaceutical medicines to relieve symptoms, but because of the successful effects of stem cell therapy, his use of pharmaceuticals dropped dramatically. As in this case where there are damage to the spinal cord that cannot be detected by MRI or other tests, spinal cord stem cell therapy can promote the repatriation of non-detectable nerve damage. Stem cell therapy reveals the process of homing. Stem cells can naturally migrate to the degenerated area. When 25 million stem cells are injected into the spinal cord, 
these cells move to repair the damaged nerves. For patients of cervical disc herniation, lumbar disc herniation, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, and lumbar spinal stenosis, spinal cord stem cell therapy may improve the sensation in their hands and legs and relieve muscle weakness. I hope this becomes a new effective treatment for those suffering from these conditions. Today, we talked about cervical disc herniation, lumbar disc herniation, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, lumbar spinal stenosis, and the spinal cord stem cell therapy for them. Thank you for watching.